Hello students, I am Dr. Neera Sharma. Today I bring you a learning episode in B.Sc. Forensic Science on behalf of the content writers Dr. Vimal Rar and myself on an important unit which is Explosives Part 2. In this lecture, we will discuss about overview of homemade and military explosives and you will be acquainted with the knowledge of types of homemade and military explosives. Also the collection, preservation, handling and forwarding of these explosives. We will wind up this episode with an instrumental examination. Let us start our lecture with a look at what we are going to learn today. In module 1, we will see an overview of homemade and military explosives. In module 2, type of homemade and military explosive. In module 3, we will discuss about the collection, preservation, handling and forwarding of homemade and military explosives. Further, in module 4, preliminary examination and in module 5, confirmatory examination. Time delayed ignition devices we will discuss in module 6 and instrumental examination in module 7. And finally, we will conclude our modules in module 8. Having a probable origin in the addition to potassium nitrate to combustible matter to form Greek fire, black powder has been known in the western era for an uncertain number of centuries. Till 13th century, it has been known to be used for pyrotechnic, incendiary and demolition effects until Roger Bacon defined the material. In the following century, that Berthold Shivas invented a gun using black powder to propel stones. This discovery of the effectiveness of black powder for mechanical tasks was achieved due to the actual commencement of the past of explosives. The characteristic effect of explosives generally is the consequence of excessive force produced when a solid or liquid is suddenly converted into a much larger volume of gas and the operative volume of this gas is significantly enlarged by the extensive consequence of the heat released concurrently. The detonation of fierce overflowing or development as the consequence of abundant pressure may be instigated by an explosive or the unexpected discharge of force. As in the disruption of the steam boiler. An explosive releases a detonation because of very rapid self-propagating alteration of the substantial into more established materials. Continuously with the deliverance of heat and nearly continuously with the development of gas. An explosive may be a chemical complex like nitroglycerin or TNT or mixture of both namely amatol etc. An explosive may be a chemical complex like nitroglycerin or TNT or mixture of both namely amatol. An explosive may be of any form solid, liquid or gases. Military explosives are generally solids or mixtures so formulated as to be solid at normal temperature of use. While most military explosives release gases and this is necessary for maximum explosion consequence, a rare production solid and gaseous products of explosion. On explosion, black powder yields solid potassium carbonate and sulphate and gases. Homemade explosives. In simple language, homemade explosives are those explosives which can be manufactured by utilizing common home articles with certain chemicals which are of explosive nature. Homemade explosives are not manufactured by any fixed standards. Therefore, their materials of construction, composition of ingredients varies widely. Everything depends upon the availability of resources, information and ability of user. 
manufacturing of homemade explosive does not require any special knowledge regarding explosive technology. Rather, it could be done by improper combination of various chemical substances. Homemade explosive could be in any form that is liquid, powder or pellets that may be formed by using generally existing chemicals and apparatus. Generally, in a more sophisticated term, homemade explosives are called as improvised explosives. The term improvised has an extensive meaning and the same encompasses modified explosives or devices. Therefore, has extended name as improvised explosive device. An improvised explosive device, IED, occurrence is the application of a homemade bomb and damaging instrument to extinguish, injure, harass or distract. Since they are improvised, IEDs are available in various arrangements, varying from a minor pipe explosive to a refined apparatus in complete of triggering enormous destruction and loss of life. IEDs can be approved or transported in an automobile, approved position or thrown by a individual transported in a set or hidden on the wayside. The term IED derived into daily use in the course of Iraq war that commenced in 2003. The IED is used by insurgents, terrorists and criminals around the world due to its ease of manufacture, relatively low cost and potentially devastating effect on the people and property. The application of IEDs is steadily increasing and proliferating worldwide for two very simple reasons. First and foremost, the HME precursors, bomb making ingredients needed to construct IEDs are inexpensive to acquire, easy to obtain and will be converted into an extensive variation of improvised explosive devices. Now we come to military explosives. These explosive products and components produced are used by the armed forces for national security. The term military explosive include explosive products or components in the monitoring of the defense ministry and forces. The term comprises restrained gases, liquid and solid propellants, explosive pyrotechnics, chemical and insertion control agents, smokes and incendiaries, bulk explosives, chemical agents, chemical explosives, rockets, directed and air-to-air -air missiles, bombs, warheads, mortars, rounds, artillery explosives, small arm explosives, grenades, mines, torpedoes, depth charges, cluster explosives and dispensers, demolition charges and strategies and components thereof. Military explosives do not comprise exclusively inactive substances, improvised explosive apparatus, or nuclear missiles, nuclear plants or nuclear components. From the viewpoint of chemical composition, military explosives will be separated into three classes as follows. The first one is inorganic compounds such as lead, azide and ammonium nitrate. The second class of compounds contain organic compounds that include the following chemicals. Nitric esters such as nitroglycerin and nitrocellulose, nitro compounds like TNT and picric acid, nitroamines such as halite, nitroso compounds such as tetracene, metallic derivatives such as mercury fulminate and lead stiffnate. In the third category, we have mixture of oxidizable materials and oxidizing agents that are not explosives separately. Black powder and pyrotechnic arrangements are samples of this class. The following categories of artillery are the most usual forms found in the field and are discussed in more detail in the following section. First, we will discuss small arms explosive. 
A small arms explosive, usually known as curved, is a single unit comprises of container having the propellant charge with the missile implanted in one terminal and the primer charge in the other terminal. Small arms explosives can be fired from pistols, rifles, shotguns and machine guns. Small arms explosives include projectiles of 0.5 caliber and smaller without an explosive warhead. Though the dangers related with small arms and exploded explosives are moderately insignificant, small arms explosives may detonate if thrown into a fire or if the primer is hit with a piercing article like as a nail. Hand grenades. Hand grenades are hand thrown devices that contain explosive or biochemical filler. A grenade has three chief zones, a body, a fuse with a pull ring and safety clip and filler. Categories of grenades that can be come across as unexploded explosives include fragmentation, smoke, chemical and radiance grenades. Rifle grenades. Rifle grenades are grenades attached to a tube that fits over a rifle barrel. Special explosives are used in the rifle to provide the force necessary to boost the grenade to the target. Rifle grenades characteristically comprise high explosives, white phosphorus, right control means, illumination flares or chemicals that generate colored or screening smoke. Rifle grenades particularly have impact fuses either on the nose or after the missile. Now we will see projected grenades. Projected grenade substituted the rifle grenade in the early 1960s. When the grenade is fired, the fuse is armed. If the fuse does not trigger and fragmentation make this the most likely explosives to result in death or damage to the public and employees on the civic parkland and centuries. The unexploded explosive item is tremendously hazardous and probable to detonate if progressed or held. The small mass quantity of explosive and fragmentation make this the most likely explosive to cause death or damage to the public and employees on the civic parklands and refuse. The next is projectiles. Projectile array from approximately 0.223 to 16 inches in diameter and from 1 inch to 4 feet in length. Projectiles that are 0.5 caliber and smaller will not comprise an explosive charge. Projectiles from 20 mm by 30 mm may comprise a fuse and an explosive charge. All projectiles larger than 30 mm should be assumed to have a fuse and explosive charge. White phosphorus or chemical agent. In general, the larger the projectile, the larger the explosive charge or the amount of chemical agent it will contain. Also the larger the projectile, the greater the strength of impact and therefore the deeper the projectile may penetrate into the soil. Now we will see mortars. A mortar is a type of projectile that has a very sharp angle of impact. Mortars vary from about 1 inch to 11 inches in diameter and are filled with explosives, toxic chemicals, white phosphorus or illumination flares. The motor fuse is usually in the nose of the curved which is triggered only afterward the round leaves the gunfire tube. The round normally has a tube with the stabilizing fins behind the explosive warhead. Mortars being fairly lightweight when compared with other larger projectiles are generally found at or near the ground surface. Rockets Rockets can range from 1.5 inches to more than 15 inches in diameter and can vary from 1 foot to more than 9 feet in length. Rocket warheads contain explosives, toxic chemicals, white phosphorus, sub-explosives, 
right control agents or illumination flares. Fuses can be located in the nose of the rocket warhead or at base of the warhead in front of the rocket motor. Both the warhead and residual propellant in the motor can cause injury or death. Guided missiles. Guided missiles differ from rockets in that guided missiles have internal electronics that direct the missile to its target while in flight. Spent guided missiles can still contain residual propellant that could ignite and burn violently. Guided missiles are extremely dangerous because they can contain fuses that detonate even without human contact. Bombs. Bombs are considered to be dropped explosive. Bombs ranges from 1 pound to 3000 pound. Newer bombs or smart bombs can have a guidance device to guide the bomb to its intended target. Generally, all bombs have the same components, a metal container, a fuse and a stabilizing device. The metal container or bomb body holds the explosive or chemical filler and may consist of one or more pieces. Bombs use either internal or external mechanical or electrical fuses, which are typically located in the nose or tail section. Some type of arming vein generally arms mechanical fuses. The arming vein operates like a propeller to line up all the fuse parts and arm the fuse. Fins or parachute assemblies attached to the rear section of the bomb stabilize it during flight. As unexploded explosive, bombs may be broken into components, for example, body components and a fuse and may not appear to be bombs, but they remain hazardous. Sub-explosives Sub-explosives are numerous bomblets, bullets or mines housed in a canister-like or artillery projectile delivery system. When activated, the delivery system, for example, dispenser, missile or rocket warhead or artillery projectile releases the sub-explosives. The delivery system scatters the sub-explosives while still airborne, scattering the sub-explosives over a wide area. After dispersal, sub-explosive fusing systems activate in a diversity of ways, including impact pressure, time delay, magnetic or moment. Overall, sub-explosives are among the most dangerous unexploded explosives since they are small, as small as 35 mm film canister, consist of an explosive charge, do not look like military explosive and are easily picked up. Landmines. Landmines are explosive placed in or on the ground. Landmines explode when the fuse is triggered by pressure when a trip wire is pulled or in the existence of a magnetic field. Flares. Flares may be moreover released or fired up as a missile. They generally contain of a magnesium complex that burns at very high temperatures, a fuse that initiates the burning process and a canister that contains the magnesium compound, a fuse and perhaps a parachute. Flares are unexploded explosives will normally be found on or near the surface. The danger from a flare is both the fuse used to ignite the flare and the intense heat from the burning flare. Fuses. A fuse may be an essential portion of a comprehensive explosives or an isolated constituent that is joined to the rest of the explosives prior to firing. If a fuse fails to function properly, it will have undergone significant stress and may or may not still be joined to the explosive. Fuses come in a large variety of forms and extents and therefore are many of them most difficult items to identify.
military explosives or homemade explosives they all fall in the category of explosives and hence they are managed as similar to other evidences but it requires special care and attention due to its perilous nature if the timer was made from a unique type of watch for instance that information could help narrow the search for that created the device or where it has come from evidence resulting from an apparent explosion and recovery of an explosive apparatus can be examined examinations are grounded on the principle that machineries and fittings applied to build the devices survive the explosion although this figured the inspection can achieve the following classify the apparatus applied to build the apparatus such as switches batteries detonators tapes wires and fusing systems identify the explosive main charge determine the construction characteristics determine the manner in which the apparatus operated or was designed or intended to function determine the specific assembly techniques employed by the builder of the device preserve the trace evidence potentially existing in the devices so that it is not destroyed or damaged during the examination collection and packaging attentions container should not be filled to the top minimum of 3 inches space should be left between the packaged evidence and the upper of the container the package should be prevented from breakage zip lock storage bags are not suitable for shipping or storing explosives remainder evidence the control samples must be composed from the detonation place and preserved explosives residue evidence should never be stored or shipped with unpackaged explosive materials preliminary analysis of explosives deposit can determine whether substances are high explosives low explosives or incendiary mixtures whether the arrangement of the substances is consistent with known explosive products and the type of explosives explosives remainder can be dropped on metal plastic wood paper glass cloth and other surfaces residue may be deposited after handling storing or initiating an explosive confirmatory examinations are usually carried by chemical analysis at initial level typically chemical analysis at the scene of the crime should be avoided due to safety and contamination risk in the laboratory selecting the methods used for analysis and their order are determined by several considerations including integrity of the evidence nature of matrix performance of available reagents and instruments some of the instrumental techniques used for explosive identification are as follows the first one is thin layer chromatography the identification and quantification of the high explosives or low explosives are difficult analytical problems these difficulties developed particularly in the course of analysis of environmental pollutants forensic examinations and checking technological processes and service conditions of explosives manufacture the first of these generally represented in the research literature concerns quality and measurable analysis of explosives the second is where tlc is applied as a clean up technique in this case analysis is completed by other analytical techniques 
The last group of applications mainly covers the assessment of LE stability, although recently more sophisticated techniques like thermal analysis and gas or liquid chromatography are commonly used in many laboratories. TLC is currently in use. Starting from paper chromatography and improved over many years, TLC has become very effective in the investigation of explosives. Apart from high performance adsorbents and the capability to perform separations in both normal and reverse phase systems, the real advances are due to the development of densitometry and spray-on technique of sampling. Classical thin layer chromatography has been applied mainly as a screening method and has served to provide essentially qualitative analysis in addition. Instrumental TLC provides both qualitative and quantitative determination. Thin layer chromatography like all other chromatographic technique is a comparative method. It is impossible to obtain information about the structure or identification of unknown compounds or mixture. In such cases, there occurs a possibility of combining TLC with other mainly spectroscopic analytical techniques for example, thin layer chromatography, mass spectroscopy. Such combinations will probably start widening the use of thin layer chromatography in the investigation of explosives. Gas chromatography. Although some explosives are thermally labile and others are not volatile enough, gas chromatography with a variety of detectors has been found to be a good method for separation and analysis of a certain number of organic explosives. These can be achieved when using the gas chromatography under controlled experimental conditions such as the temperature of the column, injector and detector, type and length of column, special injection techniques and the use of selective detectors. The highly efficient gas chromatography separation with the capillary columns permits the analysis of explosive oils, isomers of nitro aromatics and high explosive pentaerythritol, tetranitrate, PETN and hexogen that is RDX in one run. Gas chromatography can be interfaced the flame ionization detector FID, mass spectrometer MS, nitrogen phosphorus detector NPD, electron capture detector ECD and thermal energy analyzer TEA. The greatest discriminating sensor for explosives is the TEA that perceives only compounds that produce NO and NO2. The NPD is less discerning than the TEA but impervious to nitrate esters. The ECD is less discriminating but is more sensitive for nitro aromatics than the TEA or NPD. Mass spectroscopic methods has acknowledged possibly the most widespread study for the discovery of explosives. High performance liquid chromatography. HPLC instrumentation can be suitably used to the trace investigation of an extensive diversity of explosive resources in compound mediums. Parameters of discovery, sensitivity and linearity schemes for a numeral of average explosives has been identified. These approaches have now been functional to the actual world examination of explosives in post blast remainder debris and all approaches has been equated and confirmed via more conventional thin layer chromatography approaches. The application of HPLC on a functional sample of mobile continental analyzer of explosive is also presented as an example. Primary consideration has been rewarded to the selection of a suitable column 
and the optimization of conditions for chromatographic analysis. It has been established that the columns filled with surface porous particles are suitable for being used in the analyzer of explosives. On the same point, optimal experimental conditions have been discovered. Spectroscopic methods. At present time, there is a substantial attentiveness in and dynamic examination of spectroscopic methods as the foundation for probable recognition systems. Intended for any such recognition scheme, the crucial evidence needed is statistics on wavelength and concentrations conforming to absorption and release features of the target compounds. Condensed phase mid-IR ranges of TNT, RDX, PETN and a extensive variety of other explosives, promoters, primers, propellants, incendiaries and associated resources are readily available. Raman spectroscopy can be used in a confocal imaging or scanning mode to acquire Raman spectra of small solid particles which makes this technique a very promising approach for detecting explosive residues in post blast debris. The ever expanding techniques of modern warfare led to more and more specialized requirements for explosives and propellants. Future developments may be expected to take the direction chiefly of mixtures of currently known explosives and other materials. But in some cases, the requirements can be satisfied only be new and more powerful explosives which presently are being sought. During the analysis, scientists confirm the kind of detonation that happened and recognize the kind of explosive substantial and any explosive originators like diesel fuel or ammonium nitrate used in fertilizer that has been used. Ideally, an explosive analysis provides enough information so that the origin of the apparatus can be identified by the law enforcement agencies. Dear students, I hope you have enjoyed the study content of this episode. Being a forensic scholar, one must equally appreciate the significance of military explosives as well as the homemade explosives. Both the categories of explosives are entirely contrasting to each other, but have equal standing. While former is required for national safety, the latter is a threat to it. Very often, crude bombs float into news for taking lives of innocent citizens. And that is how it is an important topic. I believe this topic would create an interest within you to learn more about these classes of explosives. Now this is time for your self-study. If you want to learn more for enhancing your knowledge, you may log on to our website www.cec.nic.in for assignments, MCQs, quizzes, LORs and other materials. Till then, keep studying. Goodbye.